In order to enable mankind to establish a permanent presence on the moon, Ethiopian-American NASA research engineer Berhanu Bolcha is working to discover a solution to the issue of where to get water. Water is necessary for life to exist. That statement holds true whether there are people on Earth or somewhere else in the cosmos. The Artemis I rocket from NASA has finally taken off, marking the beginning of a bold program of space exploration that will eventually send people back to the moon and beyond. Its primary goal is to establish a long-term human presence on the moon for many years to come. The maintenance of life and other living things also depends on water for a sustainable human presence. It is imperative to address the problem of how to obtain water outside of Earth. Without the priceless liquid, the proposed lunar colony would be impractical, and Dr. Berhanu is in charge of a team researching how it may be located on Earth's lone natural satellite. While it is possible to transfer water from Earth, doing so is both costly and ineffective. Significantly, lunar water may be converted into rocket fuel, allowing the moon to serve as a launch pad for more space missions without the need for massive rockets to escape the gravity of Earth. A prototype lightweight compact spectrometer being created by Dr. Berhanu and his colleagues might unambiguously pinpoint the location of water reservoirs on the moon. Dr. Berhanu has been concentrating on creating space devices that will help NASA with their issues ever since he entered graduate school at the University of Virginia 12 years ago and the largest difficulty of all is probably the quest for water. It has previously been established that the moon contains some water. However, the problem with the majority of detection techniques is that they are unable to distinguish between hydroxyl, another hydrogen-containing chemical, and water, which is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. To obtain this frequency, which has previously proven challenging to produce, his team is creating what are known as quantum cascade lasers, according to NASA's new service. It is a revolutionary technical advancement, according to Dr. Berhanu, that will allow astronauts to utilize a handheld device to identify both the position and volume of water, something that has never been done before. The small device may possibly be installed on a rover that is controlled remotely, Given the limited amount of space available, it is essential to reduce the size and weight of any objects intended for a lunar trip. Dr. Berhanu, who works with NASA at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, recently got $2.5 million to continue developing the prototype. Even though it could take an additional two years to complete, Dr. Berhanu is confident it can be done and that it will be successful. There is no denying his persistence and determination, and he views these as his distinguishing qualities. The 38-year-old traveled to the U.S. after high school to study physics and engineering at Virginia Commonwealth University and had to rely on himself. He was born and raised in the Ethiopian city of Addis Ababa. When I came to the U.S., I did not have a support network. I was supporting myself. I was really isolated from the culture I grew up in and immersed into a new culture. The first thing you think of is to work hard and succeed in education, he remarks as he remembers his formative years in his new nation. He acknowledges that leaving Ethiopia was a risk, but it was difficult to pass up the chance to work with cutting-edge technology and on stimulating research projects. However, Closer to home was where the motivation for wondering what was out there in the universe came from. He was raised as a devout Christian, and he claims that his early exposure to the Bible inspired him to begin thinking of the origins of the cosmos and the nature of reality. A rigorous dedication to the scriptures may prevent some people from exploring alternative viewpoints, but for Dr. Burhanu, it helped him look beyond himself. I was so fascinated about how things were created. There was the passion to know more and the curiosity to know more about what the universe looked like and how big it is, he says. The little child who grew up in Addis Ababa may be able to help overcome one of the major obstacles to further space exploration because of his eagerness to ask questions and explore for solutions. 
Without a doubt, he believes that finding the proper mentors and putting in the necessary work were crucial to his success. However, he claims the first step is to have a desire, a strategy, and to strive toward that objective. Certainly, there will be difficulties, but one needs to keep going and trying their best. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch also our next video on your screen, which looks at the terrifying new ocean forming in Africa. As always, give the video a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting future videos.